The Bull Guard presents itself as a slow and clumsy enemy, intended to train you in the art of dodging. Its polearm attacks are easily anticipated, allowing you to practice your dodging with confidence. When you reach the midpoint of the encounter, a cutscene will trigger, unlocking the immobilized spell. This new tool will further simplify the battle, making it a breeze to overcome. <laughs> It's been a while, but the immobilized spell still works like a charm. <laughs> Since you hail from Mount Huaguo, it won't hurt to teach you a handy trick. Now, here we go. Give me your hand. There you go. Should you come across any miscreants, just point your finger at them and release this spell. You'll be able to hold them in place while giving yourself a breather. Sadly, mine is but a humble trick. Its power will wear off within a few short moments. Though it's good enough against boneheads like this one. Anyway. Just consider it an ace up your sleeve. No! The young boys these days know no manners! Fear not! Teach them a lesson with your new spell! Guangxi wields a scorching double-edged sword, enabling him to deliver rapid-fire combos and ranged throws. He's a challenging adversary to pin down, so don't hesitate to cast your immobilized spell to hold him in place and inflict damage. Luckily, he doesn't boast a massive health pool, so an aggressive tactic will serve you well. Defeating Guangxi will unlock the mighty Red Tide spell, allowing you to take on his form for a brief period. Mm, another monkey, I see. Why don't you lay down your weapon and join me in goodness mercy? What say you?
destined one. Heads up! This boss is surprisingly difficult for those just starting their journey, and you may find yourself attempting to defeat him multiple times. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's perfectly fine to dash past the white on your initial meeting and return later when you've leveled up. However, be aware that the wandering white will disappear once you take down the elder Jinchi boss, so ensure you tackle the white before heading into that secret zone with the elder Jinchi. <laughs> When you near the battle, your companion the Keeper will tell you that you stand no chance against this formidable boss. But fear not, he's greatly underestimating what you can do. Ling Suzy mainly uses two attacks to keep an eye on, a fast two-part swipe combo and a charging bite. Once you master these moves, the battle turns out to be quite straightforward, especially with the advantages of Immobilize and Red Tides on your side.
Bali Guhlang may not be the most formidable Yao Guai chief you faced, but he can be quite a nuisance. Be especially cautious of his backward kick attack. It can catch you off guard. Additionally, his tongue attack moves back and forth repeatedly, requiring you to dodge multiple times to stay safe. Once you get the hang of it, defeating Bali Gulang is just a matter of chipping away at his low health until he falls. Guangmu is a spellcaster who employs an array of ranged assaults, area effect shockwaves, and toxic sprays to chip away at your health. To counter this, I suggest you focus on dodging skillfully and closing the gap whenever you can. Doing so will significantly reduce the threat he poses. Mortals do aspire. Craving immortality, Yao Guai's surely will conspire! <laughs> This serpent-like noble will put your determination to the test, and he possesses the skills to make it a challenge. So don't underestimate this boss. Interestingly, despite his serpentine form, he doesn't use poison in his attacks. Instead, he wields a powerful spear and can channel the essence of water to extend its reach. He frequently unleashes waves of watery force that you'll need to dodge to avoid significant damage. He's also known to throw his spear at you, only to summon it back to his hand. The key to victory is straightforward. Avoid his strikes while building up your own, but be cautious not to deplete your stamina. However, this isn't as easy as it sounds, as he moves quickly, requiring you to memorize his attack patterns and minimize the damage you take. Utilizing the well-timed pillar stance can also prove to be quite advantageous. Pray tell, to what end do you seek? Oh, my God. 
cripple away from us. Not without us. You have forced my hand. Now you shall face what I truly I'm merely my brother's eyes and ears. I feign my loyalty to guard this path on the bear's order. Your destiny's bleak and stark. In its grip, we share the mark. The Guanyin Temple now lies in cinders. Yet the Elder Soul endures. The root of greed ever fosters the stem of suffering. <sighs> Better to forget the thing you truly seek. The elder Jinchi Yaoguai King resides in a secret area of Chapter 1 and bears a striking resemblance to the wandering white you faced in the Forest of Wolves, both in appearance and behavior. However, this time, the arena is teeming with small, shambling corpses. While you can usually focus on battling Elder Jinchi, there will be moments when he ascends into the air and summons the corpses. It's crucial to eliminate these undead foes before they reach him, as each one that makes it to the center will restore Elder Jinchi's health, dragging out the encounter. It cannot be you. You are back? <laughs> it must be you who took that Kasaya. Now give it back!
270 years spent. <laughs> Kasaya's collected by the hundreds. <sighs> Still one chalk without his. Oh. <laughs> no, no, stop, stop, stop. Go go, go. Leave it! Just leave it! Stop the fire! I have to admit, the Black Wind King is by far the most formidable foe I've faced in the game so far. He can easily escape your immobilize spell, his attack sequences are frustratingly long, and he possesses a unique ability that allows him to transform into an invulnerable whirlwind charging at you repeatedly. This requires precise timing to dodge effectively. If you haven't already, I highly recommend going back to defeat Guangzi and the Wandering White. Their abilities can be incredibly beneficial for taking down the Black Wind King before he can inflict too much damage on your health. All those monks consumed by the fire turn to wandering ghosts roaming in Black Wind Mountain. It was I who granted them eternal repose. I have even restored the charred scriptures piece by piece. <laughs> but oh yes, I always knew. One day you shall return. Why so eager to die? <laughs> Some cheap tricks. Meet me at the summit if you dare! This battle is quite challenging, so I strongly suggest that you first unlock the secret area in Chapter 1 and take down Elder Jinchi before facing the Black Bear Guai. The reward for defeating Elder Jinchi is an item that proves to be extremely effective against the fire-based attacks of the Black Bear. The most perilous part of this encounter occurs when the Black Bear transforms into a whirlwind of flames and charges at you repeatedly. These fiery assaults can inflict significant damage, so you'll need to time your dodges perfectly. Keep an eye out for the rush of air just before it charges. That's your cue to evade. With some practice, you'll conquer the Black Bear and successfully complete Chapter 1.
fight for today! Fortune is no longer on your side! No one will come to your aid. All I need is to take it elsewhere and rebuild everything on you! <laughs> Celestial Court, if given a choice, who dared to challenge the mighty wrecker of the Celestial Palace? His words ring true. No matter how daring he was, he had not the nerve to harm the great sage. There must be someone else pulling all the strings. Exactly, and this thing is eerie. I had no idea how to make use of its power. Except to enshrine it up there, tricking lesser Yaoguais into offerings. If you pardon me, I'll go back to Guanyin to atone for my actions and be put back on the engaging band. You will never see me out there anymore. Oh, ignore his nonsense. Go now, little monkey. Go and retrieve the great sage's relic. The most elusive boss in Chapter 1 is undoubtedly the Red Lung. This formidable Yao Guai King can only be confronted after you acquire a specific item in Chapter 2. Once you have it, you'll need to head back to Chapter 1 for the showdown. Be warned, minor spoilers for Chapter 2 are ahead, so if you wish to avoid them, now's your chance to look away or skip straight to the battle. To initiate the secret encounter with the Red Lung, you must first collect the Lung Scale. After securing this item, make your way to the waterfall located in the outside the forest section of the Forest of Wolves. Although classified as a Chapter 1 boss, the lightning-charged Red Lung exhibits power levels more akin to Chapter 2. To emerge victorious, focus on the vessels on its back when it falters. Inflicting enough damage to these vessels will trigger a massive explosion, significantly damaging the beast and making the fight much shorter. For what do you must the red one into the woods tree? Smoke rising high from Buddha fire. Hit the back, let the blast be fire. As in the thunders conspire.
If you've faced Bali Guhlang before, you have a good idea of what to anticipate in this battle. Get ready for a flurry of back kicks and tongue strikes. However, this time, Langli Guhbo's moves are charged with lightning, and the boss can also call forth bolts of electricity that will pursue you, demanding precise dodging skills to avoid them. <laughs> Beyond the double doors in Sandgate Village, you'll encounter two rats, guarded by the formidable two-headed rat captains. The primary threat in this confrontation is the larger second prince, while the smaller king hangs back, using ranged attacks to disrupt your flow. It's a frustrating duo, but I suggest you to focus your efforts on the second prince. If you can defeat him, the king will flee, ending the encounter. On the other hand, if you take down the king first, the second prince will grow in power, making the fight considerably more difficult. Subscribe for more gaming tips and share your thoughts in the comments below. Furry jackass! Ooh, Wait until Master hears about this! Hush! Hush, you fool! Our restoration! We can't say it out loud now. Oh, your poor brother, Adam. What's that smell? Aye, that's fresh meat. Delivering itself all the way to this dump for our lunch. <laughs>
。扶<笑>天之下，扶子绝尘，刚劲轮长，规矩天理。哪个说了才算？哪个放人不管？你瞧那书背到家人情。The Earth Wolf moves similarly to other large, heavy creatures you might have faced before, relying on powerful swipes and charging attacks. Utilizing the pillar stance can help you avoid danger effectively. And don't forget to use immobilize whenever you can to keep it in place, allowing you to unleash your strongest attacks for maximum damage. When facing the first prince, don't let his imposing stature scare you. Dive in and keep the pressure on him. While he delivers powerful blows, his movements are sluggish, and he tends to signal his attacks, making it easy to evade them. Additionally, feel free to use him to smash through the terracotta wall on the left side of the arena. Behind it lies a crucial unique item that will grant access to several hidden bosses throughout the game. Your brother's gone. Help me and atone for your past now. No! Are you mad? Go and hunt the monkey. I'm your father.
Despite his massive size and power, the Tiger Vanguard is remarkably agile, making him a challenging adversary. His lunging sword attacks can quickly drain your health, so patience is key in this encounter. To give yourself an edge, you can cast the Red Tide spell to get a temporary boost that lets you go on the offensive without the constant fear of taking damage. If you dare to look up the king's practice again, I'll serve your dimwit full up for supper. Myself. <laughs> Ain't you that old loser? Where do you come from? Your poor faced mug. <laughs> Who cares anyway? This body of yours is perfect for the art of rock solid. Similar to the Vanguard, the Tiger's Acolyte is quite proficient with a sword and can inflict substantial damage rapidly through his fluid attack combinations. The good news is that he has much less health than the Vanguard, allowing you to utilize your abilities effectively to eliminate him quickly and with minimal hassle. <laughs>
skills. I failed. Honestly, I think the Stone Vanguard is much easier to handle compared to the Tiger Vanguard. The slower speed really helps, and most of its attacks, including the special, where it summons a flurry of minions to leap at you, are quite easy to evade. The only real challenge is its substantial health, which means you'll need to be a bit patient while taking it down. Although he isn't officially a Yao Guai chief, the Drunk Boar is quite a force to be reckoned with, and mastering his attack patterns is essential for victory in this duel. He loves to throw dust clouds your way, obscuring his movements, so you'll need to stay on your toes to avoid being caught off guard. A smart strategy for this encounter is to use the Thrust Stance's retreating maneuver after a combo when he unleashes his sand. Then, you can follow up with a powerful thrust attack from a distance. The key is to evade the blinding sand and steer clear of his claw swipes. Once the sand clears, he becomes much more manageable, allowing you to claim victory in this battle.
Intensity! <laughs> this is good. You and I should explore that realm together. I... Men in our time do not see the ancient moon, but this moon hath shone on men of yore. Behold! Be it the realm of sunset or the realm of gold, it's but an echo of the past. Legends speak of an ancient, colossal beetle in these sands. Whilst deep in slumber, it lay hidden beneath the Earth's embrace. When awakened, it would devour all souls that crossed its path. Its shell, harder than stone, defied the strikes of common arms. It struck fear into traveling merchants and wider to neighboring realms. But a yellow-furred rat sensed the immense power emanating from the insect. He halted the beetle's havoc and harnessed it for his own end. Overjoyed, the king named the rat Gwai, the royal sage, and built a shrine in his honor. The bound beetle was a perfect source of power, so the rat stayed. He seized the tongue monk using the new power, and battled with Soon Wukong upon the Yellow Wind Ridge. The Gwai's formidable wings failed the vast expanse of the sky. Were it not for Bodhisattva Lingji, Tung Monk's quest for the scriptures would have failed. Yet, stripped of the rat's protection, the kingdom was plunged into a state of ruin. The once lush Yellow Wind Ridge now lies a desolate wasteland. <laughs> Black Loom is a Yaogwai king that can easily go unnoticed hiding behind a sand waterfall to the right of the Rockrest Flat Shrine. To challenge this formidable boss, you must first acquire the Lung Scale, which is also required to face the Red Lung in the Forest of Wolves during Chapter 1. Unlike the Red Lung, the Black Lung takes on a humanoid shape, though it is impressively large and beastly, fitting for a draconic Yaogwai King. At first, this powerful adversary may seem manageable, as its attacks are potent yet relatively easy to evade. However, it possesses a particularly tricky special move, where it slams the ground, unleashing a series of electric shockwaves that are tough to dodge. The best strategy to counter this is to climb onto a nearby rock, where you can safely wait out the chaos before rejoining the battle to finish him off.
Honestly, the Gorai Taoist isn't worth the effort it takes to find him. Sure, he has a fascinating array of moves that involve splattering poisonous blood everywhere, but in the grand scheme of things, he's not much tougher than some of the standard foes you face. You'll likely dispatch him in no time and be on your way. The Mad Tiger is a hidden Yao Guai chief that becomes available only after you complete the old Rattle Drum questline. This fierce creature is incredibly nimble and possesses some devastating attacks that can deplete more than half of your health in a single strike. He is designed to be faced later in Chapter 2, once you've enhanced your stats and unlocked a variety of skills. To gain the upper hand in the battle, combine the Immobilize, Red Tides, and a Pluck of Many spells to quickly reduce the Mad Tiger's health and dictate the pace of the encounter from the very beginning.
The Man in Stone may not fit the traditional mold of a boss, but he does come equipped with a health bar akin to that of the Mother of Stones, the hidden mini-boss essential for the Man in Stone questline. That's why I'm including them in my boss fight series. The Mother of Stones presents a unique challenge, though it's not overly tough. Instead of launching direct attacks, she opts to summon a horde of rocky minions to distract you. Don't be fooled by this tactic. Just dodge their strikes and focus your efforts on the Mother of Stones, and you'll take her down with ease. In a similar vein, the man in stone, despite his taunting, is no real threat. His health bar is so minimal that you can likely defeat him before he even manages to inflict any significant damage. Oi, God, come here, will ya? Some bastard has got me trapped on this rock with his spell. Even the rocks on the rocks have come to life. In that cave, there's a rock guy lurking. All the secrets, I bet. Should you uncover the reason, I shall find my way out. Rocks turning into guys, just no small matter. Here, eh? You ain't expecting this bat, are you? Shameful! Be gone, you greedy inept wretch! Get lost! Disgrace! Get lost! Disgrace! Get lost! You 
Are you expecting another treasure, are you? You wicked twerp. But I, I can't be handing it over to you for free. Come back later to trade with Will. Easy there. I'll need a bit of time to get restocked. When you gather all six Buddha's eyeballs and head to the massive boulder in the Stone Vanguard Arena, you'll discover that you can interact with it to place the eyeballs inside. Once you do this, the boulder will rise and transform into the secret Yao Guai King, Shigandang. Prepare for a battle reminiscent of the Stone Vanguard, but with a tougher opponent. He's large and lumbering, delivering powerful blows. The real threat comes from the shockwaves generated when he slams or pulls his fists from the ground. As you delve into the secret area unlocked by the yellow-robed squire's questline, you'll come across the Tiger Vanguard, a variant of the original. This alternate version is considerably less formidable, yet it still exhibits many of the same features and maneuvers, such as impressive agility and powerful combo attacks. Thankfully, with all the spells and powers you acquired so far, you should easily be able to dominate the Vanguard and proceed beyond the gate it stands watch over.
Might. <laughs> Brave soul, why not use this might to aid my king's good deed? <sighs> Our king comes from Mount Lingshan. His kind heart seeks to end the place's suffering. The Yao Guai's skills run deep, yet with your help, our chances will be doubled. The king is just ahead. With my meager skills, I cannot join you. Please, go aid him quickly. Truth be known, being a father of two little ones, my life is not mine to give. Fuban serves as the primary antagonist in the hidden area you access during the Yellow-Robed Squire quest. Within this memory realm, you will team up with the Yellow Wind Sage to confront Fuban, a colossal sand beetle that wreaks havoc across the desert landscape. The battle against Fuban is relatively straightforward and follows a set pattern. Initially, you'll face the beetle solo, targeting its legs, which are the only vulnerable spots. Fuban will unleash slow but powerful slam attacks that are easy to evade. As the fight progresses, you can climb onto Fuban's back to destroy the vessel it carries, allowing the Yellow Wind Sage to join forces with you, leading to a swift defeat of Fuban. an end of the world. Each day, the sun sets and boils the sea. The boiling hiss is sharp enough to ravage babies in their cradles. The people sound drums to counter the impact, but the drums draw this Yao Guai. The vessel this Yao Guai holds protects it from me. Your boldness in venturing here is clear. Aid me with this. It's right here, beneath us in the sands. Together, we shall rid the people of this wretched Yao Guai.
Beetle's coming!
Do it now, young monkey! On the folk's behalf, I thank you. The Yellow Wind Sage serves as the ultimate main story boss in Chapter 2, and he's likely the most formidable Yao Guai you'll encounter in this segment. It's crucial to approach this battle well prepared. This adversary merges the agility of the Tiger Vanguard with the brute force of the Stone Vanguard. But what makes him particularly challenging are his tricky wind-based attacks that are hard to dodge. To give yourself a fighting chance, I strongly suggest taking down Fuban, one of the chapter's hidden bosses, as he drops an anti-wind vessel that can help you tackle the Yellow Wind Sage effectively. Come <laughs> on. 
Just for a short reign over this barren valley. Sotva Lingji of New Mount Sumeru, the warden of this rat. After the great sage's passing, his six senses were scattered across the mortal realm. This thieving rat chanced upon one of them, yet hindered by his meager might, he could not absorb its power. Thus he schemed with wicked intent, a victim of his deceit. I had my head taken by him. A sense requires such a grand container to release its power. I should bear the blame for his reign of havoc upon this ridge again. <sighs> Through your valor and sagacity, order has been restored. You are the sole worthy one to keep it. Please, keep it secure in my stead.
Facing Kang Jin Lung in Black Myth Wukong can be quite the headache, as this aerial foe makes it hard to strike unless she comes down to your level. Fortunately, with a few smart tactics and the immobilize spell, you can breeze through this encounter. The secret to inflicting the most damage is to cast Immobilize when her head is low and you're close enough to hit her. This timing is crucial and can be tricky to get right, but once you do, you'll be able to unleash devastating charged focus point attacks on her head, racking up impressive damage. <laughs> How delightful. It still recalls your scent. When that monkey was alive, he was all about weeping and begging for help. Now, even in death, he led all you younglings right to me. This sack of mine can barely fit you all. <laughs> Kung Jing Long, now that you are ready, go and weigh up this one for your master.
<laughs> you have chosen your way. This time, there will be no easy way out. Captain Lotus Vision is a floating statue that relies solely on the magic emanating from the tip of its staff to launch attacks. While its movements and strikes are relatively slow, making it seem easy to defeat, the challenge lies in its complex array of attack patterns. The most powerful of its abilities is the arena magic. During this phase, the captain positions itself at the center of the arena, rising slightly higher to become a target. It unleashes a laser towards the ceiling, which then scatters into multiple beams across various sections of the arena. Once this is done, the captain follows up with a barrage of magic projectiles. To survive, it's crucial to navigate around the lasers carefully, taking your time to dodge the incoming projectiles. Thank <laughs> you. 
You will meet Captain Y's voice in the third chapter, marking it as one of the game's more perilous bosses. This battle stands out because, unlike typical encounters in Black Myth Wukong, you cannot directly attack the main body of Captain Y's voice. The key to victory lies in first assaulting the right leg to weaken it enough for the boss to collapse. Once it's down, unleash your most powerful spells, heavy attacks, and spirits to maximize damage. Focus on the yellow core, as each successful hit will amplify the damage dealt to Captain Y's voice.
well, well. Boss wins and an old friend. I couldn't be happier. Join me. Snow is the best soil for poetry. <laughs> Hold it, my friend. Sit with me a while. Dark furred, devious natured, hunting that guai is no simple task. You do have some skills, but this land bites with the cold. Lack of readiness could be your undoing. Our reunion is destined. And so is my role to teach you this little trick. Ah, I am extraordinary, as is my flame. It shall help you in need, need injury, weariness, or frostbite. Beast or Yaogwai, none shall dare to draw nigh.
stubborn. Keep at it. You can melt into blood and pus. <laughs> Darling, come on. It's perfectly cool in here. Join me inside. That's been done, practice, will you? <sighs> Such humor, Admiral. Let go of your stubbornness, and I could request Master to set you free. Then I'd be open to joining you. Oh, I don't deserve you. That old bastard has really made good use of Wukong's relic. Even you have left the courtier bend to his will. Yet my ears tell me that the destined one has dropped the money wheel. Pity. Reckon it won't be your master who unlocks these metals eventually. These gold symbols are made by our Grand Master. And you think a puny monkey can go beyond that? know he's here below. Turtle? Snake? Who cares? I caught a whiff of monkey stench familiar enough for me to sound by welcome. Master valued your talents. He kept you alive beneath the pagoda for your own good. How ungrateful. Evidently, you just don't deserve the ecstasy of the new West. You want to save me? But who do the same? Tremors for thunder. Catch the spawn bomb. Oh, my God. 
makes one tremble with the light. Monkeys are set in their ways. Still, though, you'll never crack the gold symbol. So long, constipation. I was nearly cooked alive in there. Move it. <laughs> Blasted I saw. Wasn't even worth my second glance back in the court. Ah, that same look again. A furry coat and a pinched face. Luck's all you've got. Great, another mute. Whatever. Let's not dally. Now the turtle and I have shared a few tales. For what deed must his head be hung for all to see? For what deed must the waters they govern roam free? For what deed must all matters not known how to be? For what deed must mercy's hand so woe upon thee? For what deed must the Scion one onto the shores flee?
Chen Lung unleashes a range of powerful lightning attacks that can inflict significant damage. Fortunately, dodging them is quite manageable due to the spacious arena and the clear warning signs they provide. Just stay alert and be prepared to evade. Compared to other bosses, Chen Lung is relatively fragile, making him more vulnerable to attacks, so a solid strategy is to unleash a flurry of spells against him. However, taking down Chen Lung isn't the end of the journey. This dragon also serves as a quest provider, but I won't spoil anything further. If you're eager to learn how to initiate and finish the essential Chen Lung quest, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games.
Torben! <laughs> this old log can hardly move a muscle as he is. <laughs> Only one of Shudong's resurrection pills can save me now. <laughs> Yin Tiger is a secret character boss found in Chapter 3 at Zodiac Village, where you can get the ebb and flow transformation and equip an additional curio slot. First off, you should realize that using Immobilize against the Yin Tiger is a waste of resources. The creature can easily teleport away from the spell when you try to attack, so it's better to save your mana for other, more impactful spells. Wind Tamer and Pluck of Many are great options to consider. Also. Keep an eye out for the Yin Tiger's fearsome roar. If you get caught in it, you'll be stunned and will face multiple attacks from the beast. This roar functions like a grab, making it impossible to break free, so your best strategy is to avoid it at all costs.
one monkey dead, and another shows up. <laughs> the face of the destined one. It will fit me just as well.
Saw nothing but gullible goodness. <sighs> Our brother does misjudge as well. It requires no effort to trick you. You will never be the destined one. Let me help you end your sorry life. <laughs> Still.
Hardly a fair fight. Nothing more. I've done as our brother asked. Till we meet again.
Dead already. For years, I prayed you'd find peace. Still, you come to take my life in penance against yours. You wouldn't understand my agony when I took your life. The Buddha sees. No such vengeance. I shall usher you to the beyond once more. Find you. Come take my life in penance against yours.
Even the scriptures can free me from this dream. Uh, the nature of your quest is beyond remedy. I've brought this upon myself. Yellowbrow is the formidable Yao Guai King boss that awaits players at the conclusion of Chapter 3, located in the new Thunderclap Temple, near the Mahavira Hall Keeper's Shrine. The encounter with Yellowbrow unfolds over three distinct phases. In the initial and final phases, you engage directly with Yellowbrow, while the second phase pits you against the Macaque Chief. If you happen to fall in the third phase, you'll respawn right at the beginning of that phase allowing you to jump back into the action without having to replay the earlier segments. Yellowbrow's attacks are notably slow and lack effective tracking to his sides, making it advantageous to stay close to him. Positioning yourself to his sides or behind him opens up numerous chances to strike while he recovers from his sluggish moves. In the final phase, Yellowbrow will cast an enchantment on himself, turning into a golden form that renders him immune to light attacks. However, you can shatter this golden state by unleashing normal or charged heavy attacks. I told him the others are less than us. His misstep cast him back into the endless cycle. Reborn, he drew three disciples. But what did they change? One ended up a corpse, others fugitives. He, too, took to the shadows. <laughs> Pathetic. Those journeyers have misplaced their worship. Why bet on the Sutra when one oneself can be a Buddha?
awaits misguided souls like you. Enter with me and find enlightenment. Trickster called you too. This wicked sack is much more vicious than before, nurturing such evilness. Yellow Brow must have woven Wukong's strength into it. That bastard. Join me. Let's fight our way out. <laughs> Just like that. That's who 
you are. Keep your wits, boy. Don't get swayed. Your thirst for blood. Perceive me through sky. What? 
thou shalt revere, or thou wilt never see seal. Behold, my Mahavira horde! How can Mount Linsa match its magnificence? <laughs> rogue stole my seed sack and fled here. With Wukong's relic, he made it a soul-snatching vessel. 
He also took my look and my name to trick his old foes into vengeance. Hmm. Gah, you potbelly! I should have figured out it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive my little deception. Stolen once, I buy it. Stolen twice, I doubt it. <laughs> Your doubt is fair. I shouldn't have underestimated his nerve. I meant to subdue him myself, but you two were swifter. Fortune favors you, Bajie. But I see great potential in this young one. He might just be... Hmm? The right monkey. Enough of this empty talk! I don't care if Yellowbrow drowns in the lake. We can't have Wukong's relic sink with him! <laughs> For that, pray, lend me that break of yours. In the heart of the village of Langsi, the second sister awaits, transforming into a colossal spider when the battle begins. This creepy enemy starts the fight by charging at you with its sharp, spindly limbs. To get off on the right foot, you can use the immobilize and pluck of many spells, and if she survives your initial onslaught, keep your distance at mid-range, dodging her arm strikes while responding with quick attacks to gradually chip away at her health. While the boss is indeed swift, her movements are quite predictable, and her damage output is relatively low. By timing your immobilize spell and other techniques effectively, you can defeat her with surprising ease. Oh, welcome, good sirs. The feast is all set. Please come in and be our guests. Gentlemen, you're fashionably late. Is your lady not joining us again this time? Uh, our lady uh, prefers not to be seen in the lower realm, uh, but she's been thinking of you all and sent this small token. She hopes your lady will recover soon and pay her visit up there. <laughs> It's a pity she didn't come. Or she would certainly enjoy a splendid show we've prepared for her. <laughs> but now, the gift's gone and blood's been shed. I say, you two should take the fall. We're just servants, madam. What's the jest? <laughs> Zhu Ba Jie. I know you find your look embarrassing, but why hide from my mother with another pig face? <laughs> Rude girl. Don't you know I'm a pious Buddhist? Give me your mother's name, and I'll check my list. You heartless ass. After you ruined her house and her reputation, you're telling me you don't remember her. Reputation? 
<laughs> Yao Guai's care about reputation, all she cared about was lust. Now I know, you're one of her spiderlings, aren't you? <laughs> well, well. Your rudeness is forgiven. Show some respect. Maybe I'll kindly pay your mother a visit. <laughs> visit or not, I'm afraid that is not your call. Human skin can't change your gross nature! Uh, yes, yeah, uh, sure. We are so low compared to you, a glorious admiral of the court. A last monkey still fresh in his grave. And here you are, another monkey sidekick. Cut your bullshit! Get your mother to beg for mercy, and maybe I'll spare your foolish life! <clears throat> Truth is, the thing you seek is right here in the hollow. Flee now if you're too scared to come in. Scared, my hoof! I'll destroy this rotten hole right now! Let's see where else you'd build your lair! The Elder Armor Worm, a massive worm-like creature, lurks in the depths of Weebing Hollow. This formidable foe kicks off the battle by unleashing a spray of acid from its head. To gain the upper hand, start with spells like Immobilize and Pluck of Many, along with a Spirit Attack to inflict significant damage. If the boss withstands your initial onslaught, keep your distance and unleash a flurry of quick strikes. Thanks to its sluggish movements, you can easily outmaneuver this enemy, especially since it tends to retreat only when gearing up for an attack. Overall, with its slow pace and limited offensive capabilities, taking down this boss isn't hard at all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. The Centipede Guai is an enormous armored centipede that boasts its own boss arena within the webbed hollow. Taking it down can be quite a challenge due to its incredible speed and strength, coupled with powerful attacks and a legion of minions at its disposal. 
The most daunting move in its arsenal is a thunderous scream that calls forth a swarm of smaller centipedes which detonate upon contact. To survive this onslaught of poison, you'll need to sprint and dodge with precision. This boss is known for its quick movements and relies heavily on jumping attacks. Make sure to unleash your spell combo right after it completes a jump, as that's your prime opportunity to strike. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. In Webbed Hollow, you'll encounter the Buddha's right hand, which takes the form of a large fly's tail. It initially appears as an enormous hand in a cramped corridor, where the limited space allows for easy hits. As its health declines, it shifts into a beetle form. However, the confined environment still permits you to deal damage effectively. Once its health is significantly reduced, the main body of the Buddha's right hand reveals itself, launching acid vomit attacks and executing a head slam bite. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games.
I've laid your path for you. But where will my path be? From now on, we're both on our own. <sighs> Tell me, monkey, what's it like out there? Beyond these mountains? You can encounter four formidable Yao Guai kings in Black Myth Wukong, each serving as secret bosses that reward you with rare treasures upon their defeat. The final challenge is Yellow Lung, the most formidable of these hidden adversaries, renowned for his exceptional combat abilities and control over lightning. However, you must first conquer the other three Yao Guai kings, Saiyan Lung, Black Lung, and Red Lung, before you can engage in the ultimate showdown with Yellow Lung. You'll find Yellow Lung at the relief of the Fallen Lung Shrine. He unleashes electric attacks that inflict the shock status on you during the fight. This condition increases the damage you take from all sources until it is removed. Unlike effects like poison or burn, shock doesn't drain your health over time, but it does make every hit from Yellow Lung significantly more punishing. He's armed with a glaive that has remarkable reach, but he is less effective in close combat, so try to stay near him when you can. Although he has a limited array of moves, each one is devastating. With higher health and damage than most bosses in the game, it's essential to stay aggressive and be ready to heal at the right times. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. <laughs>
Sire's head was hung when he defied this celestial court. We dreaded the Jade Emperor's wrath and pleaded with Master Yuan to help us abscond from our waters. But he warned us we might hide for a time, but not forever. In the end, someone will come to claim our lives. <sighs> he had more to say. Sires to sons, we are destined to die for the righteous cause. I trust him, yet I won't obey. May your path not once more be a mere thread in their grand design. have been clean. If not now, when will you reunite? <sighs> Destiny repeats itself, always. <gasps> Why not cast the die once more? Borli Gupo is yet another frog boss, in my opinion, the toughest frog encountered so far. He is lurking in Webbed Hollow and employs its long tongue as a weapon, launching a poison swamp attack that releases toxic fumes across the surrounding area or various sections of the arena. Additionally, it has a tongue attack where it swings its tongue in a rapid motion, delivering two swift whips, so you'll need to observe its swinging patterns and dodge effectively. The final move in its arsenal is the grab attack, where it snatches you up and tosses you into the air, aiming to catch you with its tongue before slamming you back down. Watch out as it leaps toward you in an attempt to grab you. Sidestepping to either side is your best bet to evade this strike. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. <laughs> The first encounter with Zhu Baji happens in the Hut of Immortality, found in the webbed Hollow Zone. This fight is pretty straightforward, and Zhu Baji is unlikely to trouble you much. Simply dodge his attacks and cast your spells to finish him off efficiently. One merry night, and now she wants to take my life. You're following me like a shadow. 
shadow. Can't you do anything without me? Nitwit. Spare me this burden. After your initial victory over Zhubaji, prepare yourself for a rematch. From the Keeper's Shrine, take a left and continue straight until you find a narrow crevice. Squeeze through it and keep moving until you reach an open space. This is where Zhubaji will make his entrance. This fight will be different. Once his health dips below 50%, Jubaji will undergo a transformation into a massive boar. While he may not be the quickest in this form, his attack power significantly increases. He will also shift into a mud catfish, showcasing a variety of moves. When his health reaches around 30%, he will morph into a mud rhino and summon several clones. During this phase, it's best to focus on dodging his attacks and waiting for him to revert. Steer clear of the rhino charges and the catfish slam shockwave, and maintain an aggressive stance whenever possible. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games.
Nestled in Webbed Hollow, near the Gathering Cave Keeper's Shrine, the Violet Spider is a formidable foe. She can unleash poison in multiple forms, whether through her toxic projectiles, fangs, or claws, so it's advisable to carry plenty of anti-miasma powders. The spider frequently spins webs that can slow you down or trap you temporarily. To counter these effects, you can dodge to avoid the ground webs or rapidly press dodge to escape if you find yourself caught. While she has a range of debilitating projectile attacks, her sweeping moves are few, mainly affecting areas behind her or to the sides. Therefore, staying behind her during the battle can prove to be a smart strategy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. Or would have lived if he didn't weigh my master's flesh over your lives! Yes, he was blinded by greed. But he has repented and made his compensation. He even offered that thing to sustain my life. Otherwise, I'd never live to see you today. My dear, is that true? That thing is in your hands. Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Even now in your heart, the monkey still comes first. The monkey? Nah, for me, beauty always comes first. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Carry on with these nice words. Once I'm satisfied, I might lift my finger and tell you where to find it. You wicked hag! Can't you see your old face? Still obsessed with all this lovey-dovey crap at this age? Ridiculous! <laughs> <laughs> Every day trapped in this hollow, I missed and dreamed waiting for the day to beat you right after we met, so I can heal. Then eat! Could have saved me from your stupid ceremony and vows! What a farce! <laughs> My appetite is lost, not just for you. But also for her. Mother? Hideous! Hideous spider! Who fathered such a thing? Your fate today has nothing to do with me! I had my mercy misplaced, that's all! What took you so long? I almost died! Now go, go quit this sisters. hag and get me down! Monkeys, the bane of my life. Why do you always have to ruin my plans? In what way am I any less than monkeys? This monkey that you love. I'll chop his heart, slice his liver, and make you eat him! You a hag or a try me before you!
You can find Commander Beetle in Chapter 4 at the Temple of the Yellow Flowers. He comes with a group of followers who will attack you, so a smart tactic is to employ Pluck of Many to deal with them while you focus your efforts on the boss. While he's not a major threat, be cautious of his delayed attacks and make sure to dodge his projectiles. He also has a defensive tactic where he jumps back, says something, and raises one of his weapons, which allows him to block all your attacks and then counter. To break this defense, you can use Wind Tamer or Withering White to knock him back and interrupt his move. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. You'll find the Fungi Woman lurking near the Temple of the Yellow Flowers in Chapter 4 and prepare yourself for a tough fight. Her unique skills make her a challenging opponent. Armed with a poisonous staff, she can deliver powerful blows and spin rapidly, creating a dangerous vortex that can hurl you across the battlefield if you're caught in it. Fortunately, she becomes dizzy after this attack, giving you a prime opportunity to strike back. However, she also has a spore attack that spreads across the arena, targeting you and healing her in the process. To come out on top, you need to adopt an aggressive strategy to keep her from regaining too much health. Otherwise, the encounter could drag on far longer than you'd like. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. <laughs>
Venom Daoist is one of the hidden bosses in Black Myth Wukong. Locating him twice and defeating him both times will force him to reveal the entrance of the secret Purple Cloud Mountain area in Chapter 4. The first Venom Daoist location is in the Webbed Hollow at the Pool of Shattered Jade Keeper's Shrine. You'll find him in a big cocoon. Once you've reduced his health, he will retreat, hinting at a future battle. The second Venom Daoist location is a boss arena that can be found in the Temple of Yellow Flowers after reaching the Court of Illumination Keeper's Shrine. In this second encounter, you'll face him twice consecutively, each time with a full health bar. Despite the increase in health, his behavior remains consistent with your first fight. In each phase, he will lose two of his arms. Just focus on using Immobilize with quick attack combos and dodge his sword attacks to win the fight. Once the boss is defeated for good, he reveals a mural on the wall and tells you to go visit the Purple Cloud Mountain area. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games.
There's never ascension from those sacks. <laughs> Worthless limbs be gone! <sighs> that old Taoist fooled me. My challenge was a delusion. Forget it! Face me in a fair fight. You shall learn to best that corruption. In my view, the Scorpion Lord is the most challenging boss in Chapter 4. Even at higher levels, he can take you down with just two hits. This encounter is especially tough due to his high damage and poison-infused attacks. To prevail, you need to adopt an aggressive stance while being precise with your dodging. Many of his strikes also apply poison, which can turn a drawn-out fight into a battle of attrition that's hard to win. As the battle unfolds, the Scorpion Lord will increase his aggression, and you must do the same. Timing your spells like Immobilize and Pluck of Many, along with the Wandering White Spirit attack, is key to inflicting serious damage. When your spells are depleted, 
perfect dodging becomes essential. If you get hit, back off immediately to heal, as a second hit could be fatal. Don't forget to cure any poison right away. Although the Scorpion Lord has a limited attack repertoire, each attack can be fatal, so understanding his patterns is the key to victory. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. Taoist Me is a secret boss who can be found in the Purple Cloud Mountain secret area in Chapter 4. In order to fight this boss, first you must obtain the Violet Hail key item. If you want to see how to complete the Taoist Mai quest and how to get the Violet Hail, check out my link in the description below. Taoist Me has the ability to inflict poison, which will slowly drain your health points, so be sure to carry antidotes to counteract the effects. He is relatively weak and sluggish, making him an easy target. Utilizing skills like Pluck of Many, Immobilize, Wind Tamer, and Withering White can rapidly reduce his health. This strategy works for both of his phases, but you'll need to exercise extra caution during the second phase. Also, keep in mind that if you skip him and start the battle with the Dusk Veil, he will disappear and you won't be able to get his drops and rewards.
strong foe. Just what I need. You shall be my initial feast to power my metamorphosis ascension. <laughs> These impudent mortals have overreached themselves. Their demise was of their own creation. <sighs> but you, you are special. What poison them only strengthens you. Keep it close and wield it wisely. You'll see its potential. Go, release him. Being trapped there is a torment worse than death. I've watched him grow up. I cannot bring myself to do it. The Dusk Veil is a hidden boss you can encounter in the secret area of Purple Cloud Mountain during Chapter 4. You'll find this formidable foe at Cloud Nest Peak. It's highly advisable to take down the Scorpion Lord and Taoist Mi before engaging the Dusk Veil, as starting this battle will cause them to vanish from the area, preventing you from claiming their rewards. The Dusk Veil's attacks are notably slow, which makes them easier to read and dodge. A smart tactic is to strike a few times and then evade its attacks as they come. Spells can also be effective for dealing extra damage. In its second phase, the Dusk Veil has a special aerial move where it levitates and sends a barrage of spikes your way. When you see it lift off the ground, be sure to run around to avoid the spikes until the attack is over. Another attack to watch for in this phase involves the Dusk Veil jumping up, slamming a giant sword into the ground, and then stomping on it creating a wide area of damage. As soon as you see the sword land, back away quickly and wait for the attack to conclude. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games.
all these years apart. And they've marred you like this. I journeyed from Mount Lee to delve into the mysteries of this valley. I didn't mean to hold this back from you. It was because I had to. I stayed my hand for my ties to his mother. That's why I called upon you. But how did you get this? I thought it was with the Hundred-Eyed Gwai. This may well be the design of destiny itself. I shall help you and restore its power. Consider this as my token of gratitude. When the fight kicks off, the sisters will target the hundred-eyed Taoist master, seeking revenge for their mother, the Violet Spider. This gives you a perfect opportunity to unleash your spells and attacks while the boss is occupied with them. One of the most challenging aspects of facing the hundred-eyed Taoist master is landing hits. You can only inflict damage by targeting its legs or centipede-like body, but it's always on the move, making it a tough target. The most effective approach is to use spells and heavy attacks to stun it. When your spells are recharging, landing heavy attacks can disorient the boss and still provide a good amount of damage. During the second phase, be sure to step back when you notice it preparing to charge. Execute well-timed dodges to evade the lightning strikes and floating rocks. If you've previously defeated the secret Duskvale boss and obtained the Weaver's Needle, now is the time to use it in the final phase when the boss starts charging allowing you to stun it and interrupt its lightning phase. I do. Very well. Despite all your failures, you led the destined one here. I should reward you for that. But the thing I gave you, now I must have it. Yours, darling, I'll avenge you. 
Now let go of your misery and rest in peace. Thank <laughs> you. 
changed a bit. You fool. At the start of Chapter 5, as you follow the main path through the Woods of Ember, you'll meet the Pale Axe Stalwart. While he appears as a boss, I see him more as a quest-giving NPC. His attacks, all centered around his massive axe, are slow and predictable, making him relatively easy to overcome. Once you reduce his health to 25%, the battle concludes, and you can engage him in conversation to kick off a new quest. for a while. Can't imagine the chaos without me. The Brown Iron Cart is the first cart boss you'll encounter in Chapter 5. You'll find it just a short distance up the hill from where you faced the Pale Axe Stalwart, right before the Camp of Seasons Shrine. This enemy can be quite a nuisance, as it unleashes devastating flames directly in front of it. The battleground is somewhat cramped, but if you maneuver to its side and start targeting its wheels, you can avoid its slam attacks with some well-timed dodges. While it's not easily staggered, you can keep repeating this strategy until you bring it down with relative ease.
The Father of Stones stands as a menacing giant, ready to attack just a few steps away from the Height of Ember Shrine. His double-barreled shout is annoying, but the encounter is straightforward. He may hit hard, yet his slow pace and uncomplicated attack methods make it easy to avoid damage. After you take him down, you can absorb his spirit, giving you access to that impressive double-barreled shout for your own arsenal. The Grey Bronze Cart is notorious for unleashing fiery blasts along this path, making it essential for you to swiftly dodge into one of the nearby alcoves whenever it strikes. As you get closer, you'll notice it mimics the attack style of the Brown Iron Cart, relying solely on a fiery breath and a powerful two-handed slam. If necessary, use your transformations to absorb some hits, but your primary goal should be to inflict maximum damage in a short time before retreating to safety in the nearest alcove to escape the flames. Fast as wind and quick as fire make up a formidable boss duo that you encounter right after the Grey Bronze Cart battle. A common mistake many players make is rushing into this fight without first returning to the nearest shrine to heal up from the previous encounter. However, I charged in and managed to defeat the duo on my first attempt, so you might find success too. 
This encounter requires a lot of dodging. The tricky part is managing to keep track of both bosses at once. Each one is relatively easy to damage, stagger and dodge when alone. Together, they can be a bit bothersome, but if you keep them both in your line of sight and focus on one at a time, you should be able to handle the challenge without too much trouble.
boy, but these eyes have seen prettier disguises. Yao Guai! Your true face! Out with it! If a single lie slips, my rake shall strike true! <laughs> that was so close. Thank you for saving me. I am the Bull King's daughter, Ping Ping. Oh, nonsense! The Bull has no daughter! Dare to fool me, scoundrel! <laughs> I... I know who you are! My mother is Princess Fairfox. You killed her! After my mother died, I've been living with my father. His wife, Princess Rikshasi, took me in as her own. Later, brother came back from Bodhisattva Guan Yin, and we reunited. We had some peaceful days. My brother was kind, to me and to our parents. But somehow, not long ago, he suddenly changed. He secretly summoned his old troops for a coup. Imprisoned father, kept mother under strict watch. I... I had nowhere else to turn. I had to go for help. But barely after leaving the place, his minions fell upon me. <laughs> the Bull King's might is known. Even together, Wukong and I couldn't rival him. Rakshasi's plantain fan is also formidable. And you want me to believe that they were subdued by a kid? Subdued by their son? Who else could make them put their guard down? Really, with soft hearts, they could never harm him. You idiot! This fox is fooling you! Look at this place! Only my brother's Samadhi fire could wreak such havoc! Oh no. My father is dying. Please, kind monkey, help me and my family! A perilous place this is. Keep this cicada safe with you. It'll come in handy. That's a voice I know well. I'll go ahead and take a look. The Flint Chief is the first boss you might overlook in Chapter 5. You can find it near the Valley Entrance Shrine, where it will emerge from the rocks as you get closer. Given the Flint Chief's large stature, your main focus should be on its enormous arms. The best approach is to dodge around to its side while delivering attacks, especially when you have enough focus points to unleash your most powerful charged heavy attacks. If you want to speed things up, spells like Immobilize and Cloud Step can be very effective.
When it comes to mechanics, this fight mirrors the previous showdown against fast as wind and quick as fire. One adversary will hang back and launch ranged attacks, while the other will charge at you with fire-based moves. The key difference this time is that you can't take one down right away. If you deal enough damage to one, they'll retreat for a bit, forcing you to deal with the other. However, you should aim to focus on one opponent quickly, as they aren't particularly threatening when separated. This visually stunning boss battle unfolds in two distinct phases. Initially, you face the Keeper of Flaming Mountains, who poses little threat on his own, but frequently calls forth dark and light minions to challenge you. Speed is essential in this encounter. Quickly eliminate the archers to prevent being overwhelmed, and then turn your attention to the melee fighters. During the second summoning, you'll encounter Ma Tianba, the formidable horse. Man, you've likely faced multiple times throughout your journey. He's a tough opponent, wielding a whip that has an impressive range. 
After dealing with Ma Tianba, the Keeper of Flaming Mountains will summon the Yin Yang Fish, signaling the start of the second phase. Prepare for a barrage of projectile attacks and tail swipes, both of which can be dodged with some practice. Remember, if one attack lands, they all will, so precise timing in your dodges is crucial. Words from cunning foxes. You just want to trade my fan for a smile on your brother's face. I I owe my life to father. And to your kindness for taking me in. Brother was good to me, but I would never betray my parents for him. Say no more of the fan. We raised the boy. Guess this is what we deserve. But you... Why are you here at this very moment? Rakshasi, I'm not a part of your family, and I'm aware I have no voice in this. But Ping told me the Destined One had arrived. <laughs> the Destined One, who doesn't even know what he's destined for. Those old bastards must have pulled a muscle coming up with the name. You and I both know who he truly is. When the time comes, your children, your husband, and even this very palace could all turn to ashes. What do I have to fear from a mere pawn? He's no match for us. He can't even rival the power of my fan. Once the truth is revealed, suddenly he is here. Do you not find it odd? Such a twist of fate. The truth? The truth of what? Who are you talking about? I heard the Destined One had obtained all the other relics. Rakshasi, your situation is grave. Do you not see who mandated his return? Were those relics really bestowed for your good? Perhaps, amid these schemes and plots, we've unwittingly become stepping stones for his rebirth. For others, I care not. All along, you are all I care for. I say we should leave together. I vow to treasure you dearly, just like when we're up there. I never thought that one day you'd be the only one I can rely on. I am overwhelmed. Come, sit with me and tell me what to do. Don't let him, Mother! Don't you see? He is taking advantage of you! You lecher! I called for your help, not your treachery! How, how dare you! A child of a concubine should know better manners. When I first crossed paths with her, your bull of a father was no more than livestock munching on a patch of grass. Have you no shame? Mother, don't be fooled! Enough of your endless prattle. Hmm. <coughs> now that's better. Rakshasi, have we not been this close? since our time in Tushita Palace. Well, yes, I do miss the old days too. We oh, were so happy back then. What in the blazes? No, no tricks, tricks here. here. It's, it's just, just my, my hoof. hoof. You, you deserve, deserve to know, know before we kiss. kiss. You will live to repent this. Filthy <sighs> low life. You dare take her form and beguile me? My old friend, wasn't it fun? Have we not been this close since our carnage in the fox den? <laughs> you abhorrent fraud! My candid words were wasted on your foul ears! Candid, my hoof! Your revenants are everywhere! I thought you'd have better lies! Quick on your heels, huh? Well then, boy, let us teach this brazen adulterer a lesson. 
vile beast. Your savagery knows no cure. But you will behave once my sourceless water from Toshita drops. I've aided your journey once. Now I shall aid you again on your way to death. From yin and yang arises two sides. From land and sky emerges the divide. Now you shall be feasted upon by my yin yang fish. What a stingy host. Such a meager fish. Hardly enough for a platter.
The truth has been revealed. Disasters are sure to follow. The turmoil you witness is but a ripple caused by a drop from above. <laughs> Already. Bad news after a good nap. <laughs> He's gone too far from a furnished servant. A decent lad he was. <sighs> decent until ruined by brother Wukong. Then destiny carried him further to fall for the wrong woman. <laughs> <sighs> You, go up this way. Check if any way leads up. I'll go look around. The owner might be gone, but her treasure might still be there. The Crimson Silver Cart is definitely a step up in aggression from the previous versions, so it might catch you off guard. It can emit flames from its sides and back to deter flanking attacks, and will rush at you if you pause for a breather. Nevertheless, like its predecessors, it has a soft spot a solid charged heavy attack aimed at its back will make quick work of it. What a great fight! <laughs> you see how I swung my axe? <laughs> Someone fed that unruly boy a load of nonsense, and now he's running amok. Why doesn't the king take action? With his might, he could take down ten red boys! Uh, I can see the king from here. Stripped of his mount and weapon. I wonder what's behind all this. What else is hidden in this mountain? Or I, I feel blind. Blind! We should find the king's mount first. The Bishwi beast is treasured by the king as his own kin. But how could it simply vanish? The nine-capped Lingziguai may appear unassuming, but don't be fooled, it's a real menace. This creature unleashes toxic fumes at every chance it gets, but its most dangerous trick is tossing its hat at you. Once it sticks, you'll find your movement and dodging abilities severely hampered, all while suffering from a gradual poison effect. This can lead to a rapid end, so if you find yourself in this situation, look for ways to counteract it, like transforming or using Cloud Step. Overall, 
Make sure to rely heavily on spells during this encounter, as the nine-capped Ling Guai can become quite formidable if allowed to operate freely. The Flint Vanguard is essentially the same as the Flint Chief, making it relatively straightforward to deal with. If it weren't for the swarm of irritating minions surrounding him, these little troublemakers are tough to stagger, and they can quickly overwhelm you if you're not on your toes. You can utilize Flock of Many to divert their focus, then swiftly eliminate the minions before turning your attention back to the main target. The primary challenge in this battle is that you likely expended a significant amount of your mana on the Flint Vanguard earlier. However, aside from that, it's a relatively simple encounter that requires you to dodge a barrage of fiery projectiles while swiftly taking down the smaller flamlings that show up.
This cart is the toughest cart in the game, boasting impressive mobility and a substantial health pool that you'll need to chip away at gradually. Your best strategies involve using a flock of many, immobilize, and charged heavy attacks. Don't count on the rusty gold cart to falter. Instead, focus on maneuvering around to its rear while staying ready to evade its fiery blasts. Bo Lang Lang is yet another massive frog guai lurking to the left, just past the icy archway of the rusty gold cart once you step through. This creature inflicts scorch damage and wields a fiery tongue, so it's wise to prepare with some scorch resistance. However, the battle remains similar to previous encounters. Watch out for its backward kicks and tongue strikes, but aside from that, 
You should handle this fight without too much trouble. Just a short distance down the path past the Purge Pit Shrine, you'll encounter another challenging boss duo, Top Takes Bottom and Bottom Takes Top. This battle ramps up the difficulty compared to the last duo. Instead of vanishing when one of them is low on health, they retreat into their hemisphere, becoming invulnerable. This mechanic forces you to focus on the other boss. It's a tougher situation than mere disappearance, as they can pop back out to strike at you before retreating again. Fortunately, their attacks are straightforward and well telegraphed, allowing you to easily maneuver around them and chip away at their health. You 
The Bishui Golden-Eyed Beast serves as the primary antagonist in Bishui Cave and ranks as the second toughest boss in Chapter 5, primarily due to its fierce aggression. Throughout the battle, this beast will ignite the entire arena, so it's crucial to maximize your Scorch resistance. The Flock of Many isn't the best option in this fiery environment, so conserve your mana for transformations and consider using either Cloud Step or Rock Solid.
The battle revolves around the concepts of distance and fire. The Red Boy prefers to unleash a variety of ranged assaults instead of engaging in close combat. He employs shockwaves, summons, and even allows his double-bladed spear to autonomously strike at you. When he does choose to fight up close, he relies on rapid dash attacks that can catch you off guard. Luckily, the Red Boy's health isn't particularly high, and he is vulnerable to your spells, especially immobilize. Additionally, he can be easily staggered, making transformations a powerful strategy to maintain control what over him. Thinking, straight father? I brought the destined one here to save you. I may be unwell, but I am not blind. You are not blind. How can you say that to me? I went through flames to find the destined one for you. But you, father, don't you see? after I hunt her down. But first, I should burn you two together and mix your ashes to honor your friendship. Entertainment. That can wait. Let us 
ignite! <laughs> that was fun! Pretty fun! <laughs> you thought you could defeat me, didn't you? As the ultimate challenge of Chapter 5, the Yaksha King stands out as the most formidable foe throughout the entire chapter. It's important to note that he is distinct from the Red Boy, as dying in this battle allows you to respawn at the Fallen Furnace Crater Shrine, without having to face the Red Boy again. This makes the encounter a bit more forgiving. Fortunately, you'll have Zhubaji by your side during the initial phase of the fight. However, don't underestimate the Yaksha King. He packs a serious punch. I recommend honing your skills without using consumables until you feel more assured. Then bring out your strongest potions to enhance your chances of success. The rock solid ability can be a game changer here, along with the golden lining transformation, which helps you effectively parry many of the Yaksha King's attacks. Be especially wary of his most lethal move, where he conjures two long flames and spins them in a series of wide reaching, devastating strikes. The timing for this combo can be tricky. So if you find yourself struggling, consider activating your transformation and staying close to him. This way, you can inflict damage while absorbing hits without draining your health. Destined, deprived, it's all the same. Causes and effects, not what you're called. <laughs> Thanks to this false death talisman. Poor Keeper. Seems his legacy was his only offer after all.
No wonder not a single raindrop was fanned. It was your trick the whole time. <sighs> My bad, old bull. I was a bit delayed. You little rascal. I'll teach you a lesson on your parents' behalf. Holding on, despite it all. Does your vengeance weigh more than your family? Spit it out now, his relic! My king. I'm sorry for my lateness. I turned to them, but none offered help. My lady, forget it. I implore you to show mercy and spare my son. He is the last of the Yaksha's bloodline in the West. With an origin most tragic and twisted. Now, he poses a threat no more. Should you grant him mercy, I, Rakshasi, and the Bull King shall retreat ourselves to secluded meditation. Along with our children, we will never leave the mountain again.
he is our son. We will bear his punishment. If it pleases you, my plant and fan is also yours to take. Flames have paved my way. Through flames I shan't stray. Vain was my flame for revenge destined to stray. Their delight lies in our submission, kneeling and begging. Chapter 6 kicks off with an intense showdown against the Supreme Inspector, a boss that stands out for being one of the most prolonged and difficult encounters in the game. His vast health pool and relentless assault make this fight a true challenge. Interestingly, you can summon the Supreme Inspector as early as Chapter 4 by gathering all four purple talismans. The fight continues until he drops to half health, triggering a cutscene that concludes the battle. Monkey, no matter how many times you reincarnate, you're still blind to the ways of this world. Now, in your folly, you've hindered the dealings of the court. But above that, you've given a girl who knows no limits of false hope. <laughs> I shall transform her into a mighty golden pill and uh, keep it safe for you. Think about her, won't you? Should you feel like stirring trouble in your next life? After you reach the Verdant Pathkeeper Shrine in Chapter 6, you'll face the Supreme Inspector once more. Conquering him will earn you the Somersault Cloud Spell. Be prepared for a lengthy battle, as his ability to fly allows him to evade your attacks for extended periods. Combined with his large HP pool, this fight can take a considerable amount of time to finish. The best tactic is to immobilize him whenever you can, as this will stop him from taking to the skies and launching his aerial assaults. 
Also, if you find yourself in a tight spot when he conjures a circle of fire to ensnare you, you can use the plantain fan to douse the flames and regain control of the fight. Have the gall to show up! If you come at me now, this day will be your last!
Fortune's gift it is! It's Wukong's somersault cloud! <laughs> I was wringing my brain how to fetch you, but this savvy one's already on it! <laughs> it must have been hidden here amongst the mist until it sensed the relics on you. Thanks to them, it recalled its master and saved your skin. Now that it answers to your call, why not make good use of it? Ah, your mortal body is too heavy for me in my wind form. <laughs> All these henchmen of the court, what draws them to this mountain? Let's find out! To effectively defeat the gold-armored rhino, your primary goal should be to shatter its horn. When you manage to break it, the creature will be incapacitated for a significant duration, allowing you to unleash your attacks without restraint. Therefore, always focus on targeting its horn. Be cautious though, when the horn is on the verge of regrowth, the rhino will let out a roar and call down a flurry of lightning bolts. As soon as you hear that roar, retreat swiftly to avoid being struck by the bolts. <laughs>
Wukong's gold sword seer armor. That monkey was full of surprises, just like me. He had his way to linger on, and his belongings, too. They're set on killing those mongrels of a court. But we've got to snatch them first, or these scum will take them. I'll go find the other ones. Keep up with me! At last, we meet a frog boss that brings a real challenge to the table. Lang Ba Ba employs all the familiar froggy tactics, including his tongue lash and backward kick, but he shakes things up with his stone skin, which effectively blocks your melee attacks. While you can still inflict damage, it's minimal and hardly worth the effort. The key to victory lies in patiently waiting for his stone form to wear off, and then striking hard when he becomes vulnerable again.
In the foothills region, you'll encounter numerous Waterwood beasts, but only one stands out as the true Waterwood beast boss, lurking behind the mantis-catching swamp shrine. This formidable foe is tougher than you might anticipate. Towering over its smaller counterparts, it poses a significant threat, and its somewhat awkward hitbox around its mouth adds an extra layer of challenge. When it's submerged, its attacks can inflict massive damage, so employing abilities like Cloud Step or Rock Solid is wise to mitigate that risk. Position yourself near the beast's hind legs while it's above water, and use Immobilize to unleash a flurry of uninterrupted attacks. With enough hits, you'll stagger it, paving the way for even more damage until you claim victory.
Following the Supreme Inspector, Zhao Lung feels like a refreshing change of pace. In other words, he's straightforward and manageable. With low health and predictable attacks, he can be easily overwhelmed. You can approach him in any way you prefer. I found success by rapidly chipping away at his health using a powerful mix of spells and transformations. The Fengtail General is an enormous beetle that can be spotted leaping from one location to another across the Chapter 6 map at regular intervals, creating a tremor that shakes the entire screen if you're in close proximity. This boss stands out because it presents more of a skill check puzzle rather than a traditional battle. You can't inflict damage on the Fengtail General in the usual way. Instead, you must utilize the Somersault Cloud to land on its back. Once there, interact with the antennae on its head to hang on while it performs three consecutive jumps. This challenge tests your stamina. If it runs out during the jumps, you'll fall off and need to restart. To succeed, you'll need approximately 300 stamina. Following your third jump, you'll need to engage with the antennae again for another skill check that tests your health. As you grip the antennae, they will burn you, gradually reducing your health. You must endure the entire skill check without depleting your health completely, or you will perish. A significant amount of HP or solid scorch resistance is crucial to succeed, but there's a more straightforward option. Activate the fireproof mantle just before the second skill check, and you'll be shielded from the flames. Completing this challenge will enable you to defeat the Fengtail General. Indeed. <laughs> uh, with these 
silly strands, you're all the more like Wukong. Just don't prance around with your might as he did. That monkey's got a stash of treasures. I'll scout around some more. <laughs> The Cloud Treading Deer stands as the initial boss you must defeat among the four necessary to collect the pieces of Sun Wukong's armor, a crucial step toward facing the final adversary. Interestingly, the first phase of this encounter proves to be tougher than the second, primarily due to the relentless whirlwinds that pursue you, inflicting significant damage if they make contact. After you whittle down his first health bar, he transitions into a second phase, swapping out the whirlwinds and frost for toxic blood pools and projectiles. Thankfully, these attacks are considerably easier to manage. Thank <laughs> you. 
mine. <laughs> 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 Fine then, fine. With you monkeys around, I'm always toiling away for nothing. <sighs> Kid, when you step up one day, try not to forget your Uncle Bajia. All I got from Wukong were the nasty jobs. You should do better than that. <sighs> now we're done here. Time to move on. <laughs> Before you can challenge the final boss of the game, you must first defeat the Emerald Armed Mantis, the last of the required bosses. This creature only appears after you have triumphed over the Cloud Treading Deer, the Gold Armored Rhino, and the Fung Tail General. The battle takes place in the unusual arena of Zhubaji's stomach, where the Mantis rapidly showcases its signature, the long and lethal combo attacks. As its health decreases to around two-thirds, these attacks will become even longer and even more dangerous. To counter this, skills like Cloud Step and Rock Solid are incredibly effective at breaking the Mantis' attack pattern, making him vulnerable to heavy damage. If you encounter difficulties, activating your transformation always can grant you a moment of safety. But overall, this encounter should not pose much of a challenge after dealing with the Supreme Inspector and the Cloud Treading Deer.
I owe you once more for saving my rump. My belly's not too vile, is it? I'm not a meat eater after all. I hope it didn't repulse you. Well, you fetched it. It wasn't all that bad, eh? <laughs> now that Wukong's armor set is complete, we should go to Water Curtain Cave. Come with me. As soon as you strike, Son of Stones will make a couple of swipes behind him before acknowledging you as a worthy nuisance and turning around. When he rises, you can go to town on his legs while sidestepping his slow but powerful attacks, much like you would with any other hefty Black Myth boss. Don't waste your time with Immobilize, it simply won't work on him. Instead, watch for his large lightning area of effect strike. Dodging the lightning is quite manageable and it gives you a golden opportunity because Son of Stones will be down for a moment, winded. This is your chance to deliver a charged heavy attack or two. Hidden within the foothills of Chapter 6 are four Poison Chief mini-bosses, each cleverly camouflaged as large rock formations. Spotting them can be quite a challenge, as they only reveal themselves when you land from your somersault cloud and approach them closely. Don't be fooled by their appearance. 
While these Poison Chief bosses aren't the toughest foes, their poison bombs can deal devastating damage. The real danger comes from the explosions that follow their attacks, which can catch you off guard. It's best to take a cautious approach, evade their strikes, wait for an opening, and then unleash your attacks before backing off to stay safe. No! <laughs> 
The giant Shigandang is the largest boss in Black Myth Wukong. Its presence is cleverly obscured, both by the intricate environment and the necessity of collecting several hidden items from previous chapters. The giant Shigandang only spawns in Chapter 6 if you have collected the four Skanda items in the first four chapters. In order to keep things spoiler-free, I won't say more about the Skanda items right now, but if you want to find out how to collect and use the Skandas, check out my link in the description below. This colossal foe cannot be tackled in a traditional manner due to its immense size. Instead, you'll need to position yourself at the edge of its arm's reach, skillfully dodging its shockwave attacks. Wait for the opportune moment when it rests its arm on the ground, allowing you to rush in. When that chance arises, focus your most powerful attacks on the blue crystals adorning its arms. Shattering these crystals inflicts massive damage. Repeat this strategy, and you'll see the giant Shigandang fall in no time. The Stone Monkey marks the initial stage of the ultimate boss encounter, yet it can be viewed as a distinct adversary. Similar to the battles against the Red Boy and Yaksha King, defeating this first phase grants you a checkpoint. This means that if you happen to fall in battle, you won't have to start over from the beginning of the fight. Taking down the Stone Monkey's first health bar should be relatively swift and straightforward. His attacks mainly consist of standard swipes, but be cautious of his ground-pounding move, which sends shockwaves that you'll need to jump over. Things take a turn for the challenging in the second phase. The Stone Monkey unleashes a rapid and fierce expanding ring of fire that then retracts back towards him, requiring you to dodge it twice. Once he reaches a certain health threshold, he splits into two separate Stone Monkeys that attack at the same time, one wielding fire and the other frost. Additionally, trying to immobilize either of them will trigger their most devastating area of effect attacks right away. The strategy here is to concentrate on one monkey at a time. With the Jingubang in hand, build up to four focus points and unleash them to inflict significant damage on the monkeys.
The Great Sage's Broken Shell marks the second phase of the Stone Monkey battle, kicking off right after you take down the Stone Monkey in the Birthstone region. The good news is that once you conquer the Stone Monkey, you won't have to face him again. If you happen to fall to the Great Sage's Broken Shell, he will still be waiting for you when you respawn, allowing you to restart the second phase each time. In essence, the Great Sage's Broken Shell is a manifestation of Son Wukong himself, or at least a part of him. This opponent mirrors your armor, spells, stances, and abilities, employing them in rapid succession to try and overwhelm you. Expect clever tactics like sneaky uses of rock solid and a flurry of heavy attacks executed through various stances. Once you deplete the Great Sage's initial health bar, you'll enter the second phase of the battle. In this stage, you'll lose access to Sun Wukong's special heavy attack and the ability to accumulate a fourth focus point without it diminishing. However, the overall dynamics of the fight remain largely unchanged. One key aspect to keep in mind is healing. If you use your gourd at a certain point, a scripted event will occur where the Great Sage snatches your gourd, takes a sip, and then hands it back, resulting in a loss of one gourd charge while he gains a bit of health. It's a neat moment, but it's not a major concern as long as you have a gourd stocked with healing charges.
You must have heard tales about him. Some say he helped Tung Monk fetch the scriptures, was granted Buddhahood, and stayed on Mount Lingshan thereafter. Some say it was not him who was granted Buddhahood. The real him was already dead on the journey to the West. Some say that the journey never happened. He is nothing but a monkey who lives in some storyteller's tall tale. <laughs> but now, you will hear a tale which no one has ever known. Erlang is a very special boss, perhaps the most special boss in Black Myth Wukong. Many people call Erlang the secret ending of Black Myth Wukong, because this is by far the hardest boss fight in the game. To put it simply, you need to have received all four vessels, and also defeated the green-capped Marshalist in Chapter 3, in order to tackle Erlang in Chapter 6. And yes, Erlang is the toughest challenge that Black Myth Wukong has to offer. Erlang has a poise meter, which allows him to resist most attacks until you wear him down. He has very long combos, hits hard, uses unpredictable timings, and can automatically sidestep your most powerful charged heavy attacks. He also goes through three phases during this one health bar. In the second phase, he gains a plethora of very powerful and unpredictable lightning-infused attacks featuring different weapons, including an axe and a sword. And in the final phase, he gains the ability to create duplicates of himself to shoot beams at you before sending a barrage of projectiles towards you. Here are some pointers for this tough encounter. The plantain fan can be a game changer in this battle, helping to chip away at Erlang's poise meter. Plus, the flower prime soak in your gourd will clear the shocked status effect whenever you drink from it.
Also, don't forget to collect the Jingobang from the Water Curtain Cave before you take on Erlang. It's the most powerful weapon in the game. And keep in mind that if you transform, Erlang will shift into a white tiger for a powerful leap attack. If it connects, you'll revert back to your original form. Avoid this attack, and he'll change back, giving you the chance to utilize your transformation effectively. The Azure Dust transformation works wonders against Erlang, as he tends to let you attack without much resistance. However, I find this tactic a bit unsatisfying, as it feels somewhat unfair. That's it. I won't hold back from now. Let's fight! My spirits, monkey. When he was dragged to the execution yard, sword and spear were dulled, cleaver and cudgel crumbled, and yet he emerged unscathed. Yet he gave his life to put you in this place. <laughs> Let me see you in power, diverge from his. Yeah. <laughs> 
great sage. Just a yard. Time to start for If you can't obey, this Today's clash didn't satisfy my spirit. Go back with me to the sky. Let us get drunk before we continue this fight. While the Four Heavenly Kings encounter is technically the second phase of the Erlang boss fight, I view it as something special. The three phases of this grand endgame battle are so varied that they truly deserve to be seen as separate challenges. While the first phase is by far the toughest, the Four Heavenly Kings phase feels more like a victory lap than a tough battle. You may be outnumbered and facing a flurry of attacks, but each king's hit does very little damage. Plus, every heavy attack you perform in your kaiju form helps you recover some health. Keep that in mind. Focus on one king at a time, and soon you'll have them all defeated. And make sure to enjoy the spectacle. It's quite a sight to behold.
Erlang Shen marks the intense climax of the Erlang battle, kicking off automatically once you conquer the four heavenly kings in the earlier stage. At this juncture, Erlang re-enters the battle, revealing his true form to match your colossal stone monkey appearance. The stakes are higher here compared to the fight with the four heavenly kings, as Erlang Shen delivers significantly more powerful blows and can keep you in a stun lock if you forget to dodge. However, the fight itself is relatively simple. Focus on unleashing as many attacks as you can, utilize Rock Solid to counter his strikes, and don't forget to heal yourself with heavy attacks. Midway through the encounter, a scripted event will occur where Erlang Shen unleashes a fiery breath that will deplete your health. But don't lose your cool, because following this cutscene, you'll miraculously regain all your health. And from that moment on, your attacks will inflict even greater damage. So if you reach this point, Erlang's defeat is imminent.
I hear tell this Yaogua is... I rank a thousandfold about that king. As his sire, he reveres me. And like a deity, he serves me. How dare you think I'm his slave? Kindly chant the loosening spell and release that, Tathagata, so that you can take back my head then, and I can be free. The court that Yaguai said he knew is somewhat. Surely he is no mere mortal. He must be somebody from the court. Great. The journey ends here. The line is wide to bring to Watch me rip it off and break free. Tested you at my behest. All for this day. And only now do I understand that fight. No prestige can shackle him. No band can keep him caged. A mortal death for an unbound mind and will. May you not. I'm now at peace. Your journey, though, has just begun. Say, what's to come of destiny if he steps out of that mural? <laughs> I make a living by reading what was written. The signs alone tell what's to come. What's to come is what's not yet written. No one can read what's not written. Destiny is written. In what's done. What's done shapes what's to come, not escape. <laughs> it's all written for me, if only I uncover all that occurred. So? Hmm? There really is something even you cannot read. <laughs> That's good. Very good. 